Okay. Hi, I'm Kaylee Reese, um, and I have a sister. Well, actually, I have three. But for today, we are going to focus on Avery. <laughs> um, these are the most flattering pictures taken of her in the past year. Um, Avery is 13, and she's very, very intelligent. Her IQ is three points below that of Albert Einstein. That's kind of her claim to fame. Uh, she likes lots of things. She likes comics, books, and making friends with strangers on the internet, mostly. Um, more than anything else, though, Avery loves art. Um, Avery likes to make art to tell stories. It's, it's not going to load. It's very colorful. Um, Avery likes to make art to show off things she likes. And Avery likes to make art to cope. Um, it's going to load slowly. Uh, this is because Avery, due to her immense intelligence, has depression, anxiety, and OCD. A few weeks ago, Avery was put into a hospital, a mental hospital for at-risk teens. Um, while she was inside, she didn't really get much. She got clothes, meds, and whatever food was provided, which I have been told was very, very dry chicken tenders. Uh, Avery was mad about two things. The first thing was that the underwear was made of gauze, and she liked to joke that she couldn't even get some goddamn underwear to strangle herself with. Um, and the second thing was that she couldn't make art. She couldn't have pens or pencils. She couldn't have paper or markers, not even crayons. Um, Avery is how, Avery is how, yeah. Art is how Avery copes with a lot of bad things in her head. So we were naturally very angry, and Avery is now doing fantastic at home. But even before this, I was thinking, what is the relationship between art and mental health? Does art affect the symptoms of mental illnesses, and does mental illness affect the choices one might make in art? This curiosity led me to choose that connection as the topic for my research. During my research, I came across a study done by a group of scientists based out of Iceland, led by Gunnar W. Regensen. In their study, the scientists took genetic samples from 86,000 Icelandic natives. In these samples, they looked for the variants in genes that increase the risk for schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. They then looked at how common these genes were in the members of national art societies and non-members and observed a 17% difference in the favor of those in art societies. They then compared their findings to uh, medical databases of other countries and found that those deemed creative through profession or questionnaire were 25% more likely to carry gene variants that cause mental illnesses. Now, I was surprised to find that there's a connection between mental illness and creativity on a genetic level. But what astounded me even more was that in his article for the Scientific American Blog Network, Scott Kaufman displayed some research that showed it was not only the mentally ill who engaged in creative outlets, but those who were closely related to them. Because I continued to be surprised, I decided to do some research of my own. I sent out a survey to students at JA, and I ended up getting 48 responses. Out of those 48, 30 people said that they felt in a better mood while creating. That's 62.5% of my sample size. Naturally, this provoked interest in me for treatment plans, which led me to Adrian Sussman's article for the Stanford Journal of Neuroscience. There's not supposed to be anything on the slide. Um, in her article, Sussman explains that although prioritizing treatment for mentally ill artists may seem like something that should be easy to decide upon, the positive aspects of mental illness are often overlooked when making this decision, and therefore treatment can become controversial. Teresa Van Lift, however, seemed to disagree. Van Lith conducted an experiment with 12 adults that had been diagnosed with mental illnesses. She said her research culminated to four main themes. A, I connect with my inner self and elicit new insights through art. B, I strive to develop and gain a sense of achievement through art. C, I use art as my motivational force when unwell. And D, I transcend to a psychologically safe place through art. This, for me, was a turning point in my research because I began to find a lot of evidence for the positive effects of art on mental health especially in those with mental illnesses. Michael Friedman, in his article for the Huffington Post, stated that art can, help provide psych can provide help psychologically to many people in that it stops time, it provokes emotional consideration, it gives tangible meaning to work that one puts into something, and it creates a sense of accomplishment that can be linked to creating, all of which is difficult to find for people with mental illnesses. Now, I should be clear at this point in the talk. Although art is shown to have positive effects on the symptoms of mental illnesses and the overall mental health of a person, art does not act as a replacement for treatment. 
In Albert Rothenberg's article for Psychology Today, he begins by acknowledging that symptoms of mental illness differ from normal thinking and behavior, and creativity requires special or uncommon capacities. And that, however similar the two may be, symptoms of mental illnesses are frequently glorified when people are speaking about artists. He goes on to say that, although there may be a connection between mental illnesses and art, there should not be a resistance of those artists who may be affected by mental illnesses to treatment. I began to wonder why this idea of this tortured artist, the creator who can be seen as the victim and the victor, has persisted. I found a sort of answer in Claudia Hammond's article for the BBC. Hammond stated that some may believe the connection is complex and that mental health problems allow people to think more creatively than others, but this creativity drops back down to average levels or lower during severe episodes of illness. Sometimes, of course, a mental health problem can stop people from being able to do what they want to do at all. She concludes by saying she believes the idea has and will continue to exist because it is comforting to find a positivity in mental illness. Now, I know it may seem like I've just been spitting information at you this whole time, and that may even be true. But the real reason for that is the answer to my question isn't clear at all. We know that there is a connection between mental health and art, but there is so much evidence for both good and bad that we can't really decide how it affects it one way or the other. For now, I myself will choose to take away that there has been shown to be a positive reaction between creativity and mental health, and I have experienced it myself, and I hope someday you will too. Thank you.